Yeah, everyone, welcome to All Wash It Paint It. In this video, we're going to be unboxing, but guys, let's be honest, I don't think there's going to be any surprises in this box. This Tyranid's Parasite of Mortrex. I'm expecting a sprue and some instructions, but I might be pleasantly surprised. After that, we're going to actually assemble it, guys. I've been sitting wondering what to do. I'm just a bit exhausted from painting at the moment, and I was thinking, hmm, what else can we do? And, and you know, I advise all of you out there, if you're feeling a little bit fatigued, a little bit unmotivated, just mix it up, do something different. So in this video, yeah, I'm just gonna build this miniature for no real reason. I'm not about to build an army of these guys or anything like that. Just thought we'd take a break from painting. Bada bing, bada boom, we are in. Let's have a quick look at what you get in the packet. And, oh, let's just take a look at the artwork first. So this was one reason I didn't build this in the past. I just am not in love with this reference artwork. Now, I know you can paint these miniatures any style, any how you want, but I like to stick to the artwork. So it's always put me off. Let me know in the comments below. I assume there's all different sorts of factions and color schemes you can paint these let me know what i should take a look at what's your favorite give me some somewhere to go because i, I don't want to paint it like this i'm actually gonna have to go outside my comfort zone so with the box open as expected we've got a sprue and we've got some instructions also forgot the base but oh, see you later bye but does that does that count as anything that's what you get in the box should we have a look at building this up on camera so to build it up we're going to need the sprue the instructions and we're going to use a few tools we're going to have a pair of a nippers for cutting it off of the sprue we're going to use a blade for trimming down any mold lines smoothing it out sort of filing away any bits we don't like and then i'm going to use some plastic glue so i've got the citadel nippers i'm a fan of these i think they work particularly well i've got my morton swan morton sheffield england um, scalpel and that works incredibly well and then i'm uh, i'm enjoying the plastic glue as it was recommended in the past much 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 better than super glue so i would treat yourself to that but i'm thinking this tamio liquid cement i think it is is what everybody keeps recommending me in the comments so let me know if you think that is better and i'm gonna pick up some soon so we'll start with in a structure a numeral one and we want to find piece one two three uh four five and six basically all of it so we're going to grab the sprue and we'll find number one, which is this big piece here. We'll get the blade in nice and flat against that little bit there and then nip away. Top is equally easy. Get it nice and flush against the plastic and nip away. And then we've got another one around here. Again, I'm getting the blade in nice and flush and then snipping away. Then we've got this final fourth piece on the spiny bit of his tail and once again nice and flush and then I'm nipping that away. That piece is then released. Two and three are right next to each other, this one and this one and we'll nip those away. So given this is all in this section here, I'm gonna actually start gluing those bits together first, give it a little bit of time to dry. Before I do the gluing, I'm gonna take my blade. This one's particularly blunt. So if you don't have a blunt blade, by all means use the back of the blade, but mine's, mine's, mine's done. This particular blade so I'm going to be able to just scrape this along where we've nipped away the miniature from the sprue and we're just going to tidy up any little excess bit of sprue from that just give it a really smooth finish around on this side too there's a little bit left sprue we'll just skim that off and then slide the blade along smoothing that out this one's a good one to note here because that was very hard to get flush to it so it's left quite a little chunk of sprue so i'm going to cut that away with the blade and then once again slide it along smooth that out give it a really nice finish Then give a quick exam just to make sure you've not missed any bits on any of the sides. I don't think I have, so that, that that's that piece taken care of. The actual big tail bit, I remember there was a piece of sprue on this clawy sharp tail, so just make sure that's smooth and break my voice at the same time. And there was a bit on the the underside of this as well, which just needs taking care of. Of 
quick exam if there's any mold lines anywhere but this looks really smooth really nice piece so i think we're we're golden there and then there's a number two or three i don't remember which was which and it doesn't really matter they're going to connect together in a minute but i'm just going to do the exact same process here and just smooth over any of those little bits with those two bits lovely and smooth we're going to glue them together next and as i've learned following the instructions it actually shows you with this yellow line exactly where to add the glue so we're going to take piece number three which is this one and you can see you want to glue all of the flat areas as well as those two little big knobs grab our plastic glue tip it upside down and wait for it to start pouring out very and very slowly applying it to all those flat areas there's little bumps like that and is it on the spiny bit as well it kind of looks like it so let's put a bit along here let's hope that's not wrong should have probably checked before i did that but yolo and then we can click these two pieces together careful if you've got any on your fingers like i have now you can see don't want to press that onto the miniature because this will melt the plastic if you're using plastic glue it's not the same as soup glue it's much better on my fingers it's not going to glue them together but it is going to burn any of the plastic uh, that i touch it again so i want to keep those fingers well away and as soon as i've pinched this together for a couple of seconds and melted that bit because i had some on my hand as as I was just warning you about, I'm going to go wash my hands. So let's just have a look at the downside of using the plastic glue. Hopefully you can see this here. You can see my fingerprint actually has formed across where I was holding this down and it's burned that on. Luckily I've got away with it. That's not made much of a ridge at all. So the paint's going to cover that nicely. But be, be careful if you get it on your hands, make sure you clean it off. So the next bit is sticking his little taily piece to his body. Let's just give that a dry fit first to make sure we got it the right way around, which is uh, this this way around and then oh, pull him back out and just put some glue on this hexagon piece and then make sure you've not got it on your hands and then we're going to press that back in there inside just like that it's going to set nice and solid next up we're going to be looking for four five and six which is his head isn't it so we're going to be it's got to be this piece right uh, that, that is four i was correct wow first time for everything free this up from the sprue grab the top of his head here number five finally free up his this is nashes but number six I only had one bit, I think I'd snapped it off the other side or it was never attached, who knows? I just tidied four, five and six off, off camera. I feel like there's only so much rubbing my tool against things you wanna see. Then I'm gonna be applying some glue to the tippity top of his head, just make sure you know which bit I'm doing. And this sort of structure here is, is what's gonna go inside the top of his head. So I'll make sure there's plenty on there, like so. Then we need to take the tippity top of his head and wiggle it into place there. It's gonna slot in on those ridges and fit nice and snugly to it. Uh, this is the under. I wonder what this was and I thought I'd not put it in yet, but this is the underside of his mouth like this. So to glue this bit, we're gonna, I'm gonna put it on the knob. It actually shows you to put it on the small bit, but that's much harder to hold. So I'm just gonna put it here like so. And then I'm gonna click this back onto that ball. I'm trying to keep my fingers away and not melt any more of this. There we go. That's his head done. And then we can connect it to his body, which is just going in here. So what's easiest, let's put the glue on this little, uh, is it a hexagon again? Looks like it. So just a bit on the top, all the way around, just like that. And then it's, it should in this option, I, it's, this is the, the top of his spine. So we'll pop his head in this way. Oh, it's slightly looking to the side if that matters, but this went in nice and easily. Sorry, it, it's supposed to be slightly looking to the side. I just wanted to make sure that was clear if anybody's following along and needs the little guidance of which way around. I guess you could probably turn his head different ways. Maybe, he didn't say that though, did it? But maybe his wings will get in the way later if we're not careful. So we are on to stage two, which are his winglings and his legs. So for this, we want seven and eight. Number sevens are this one over here. Once again, freeing it from the sprue. And number eight was at the top in comparison to it. So it's this wing up here. I'll smooth them up off camera again. Just wanna take a second to point out that this leg does have a nice mold line running through it. So as well as cleaning up any of the spruce bits, sprue bits that are left attached, you can use the blade as well just to remove those mold lines poking out 
just making the miniature look a little bit less smooth. So let's stick on his wing. It shows you to glue along his body. I actually think it'll be easier in this case to get the right places by gluing along his wing. And that's just a matter of sticking his big bit here in this hole here and going along his sort of carapace, is it? Sort of here. Actually, it's just below it. You can see where that lined up. It's quite tricky to hit, actually. Probably the hardest bit so far, but it does just slot in nicely. So that'd be in the right place there. Ooh, is it making it harder to paint? You've got to consider that when you're building. That might now be slightly harder to paint. I don't think we're there yet, but you do consider sub-assembly. It might be a nice piece to paint off, um, off being attached to his wing. And then his leg needs to slot in and actually attach to his wing. I didn't realise that before. It might have been, I guess, easier to do before. I don't know. This won't. This will go in, though. Give this a little dry fit, though. Test this out before. Uh, we're going to get glue along his wing back there and in this hole. And then it's a matter of taking his leg. It's because you can see his wing continues on the back of his, this sort of fingery leg bit. And then that slots ooh, in there. Actually, should we put some glue in there? We missed a bit. Let's pop. There's a little hole here. Let's get a little bit of glue in there. Like so. Let's wipe that off there quickly before it melts. Got a bit on his um, armour. And that slots in here and here. Like so, and then bring his wing round on top. That's all pushed nicely together. Hold it for a split second to let it take shape. And there we go. We're gonna move on to number three, which is gonna be doing the opposite side now. And we want number nine. Is it just one piece? It is. We just want oh, this the last wing, number nine. Let's bust it off of the sprue. Nip, 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 nip. Clean him up, get him nice and tidy for his hot date with his body. Once again, I think actually gluing these together, it does advise doing it down his back, but I think it's just easier on the wing. You can see what's gonna hit. So you wanna apply glue from this big bit to this big bit here, and then I'm just gonna run that all along this ridge here. And then he's got a big hole here and a little hole here. So it's a matter of just getting those lined up in and getting the angle we want. So I'm going to bend it back slightly so it fits nice and flush against his body and not have a little gap. Ta-da! He's looking terrifying. We're on to the home straight now, just finishing off a few little pieces with step number four. We need 11 and a 12. So skipping 10, we do 10 at the end. So let's find 11 on the old sprue. And that's right here. This is must be one of his arms. And let's nip that away. Snip. Snip. Snip, and grab number 12 as well. Snip, 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 snip. Obviously we're gonna clean these up again, but I won't bore you with lots and lots of scraping. Although if you like ASMR and you listen closely, you'll probably be able to hear it. Actually attaching his arm is probably the hardest bit so far. It goes in this hole here, but you've got to really work out where it's gonna go. So I would heavily advise dry fitting this first and sort of work out where you want to position it. It looks to be about here. So next I'll be adding some glue, popping him in the little hole there and bringing his arm up something like here. So again, do consider sub-assembly for painting here because it's going to be blocking his face a little bit once this is glued in position. You might want to paint him before you attach his arms. Next I'm going to be attaching his little tail to this. I don't even know what that is. What is it? Just a bit of some cocoon, I don't know, some rock, some basing. Anyway, it's basically a support, isn't it? So stick it to its base. So I'm going to put some glue around this little hexagon knob on his tail. And then this simply slots into here. And you want it at, it's about a 90 degree angle. It's proper sticking off to the side to get it right. Kind of like this, if that's clear which angle it's pointing at. Just hold that for a second so it sets. Then we're on to the final step, which is his last arm, this piece number 10. Let's nip that away. Then we're gonna be wanting to glue this into place as well. So he's got a little notch on the bottom of his arm. Put some glue onto that, like so. Then make sure we've got it the right way up so, it's point, so his claw's pointing down. And we're gonna to wanna to slot that. Can we even see that hole there? Really hard to get to now. That just slots into there, bring his arm up again to sort of mimic his other side. Again, 
would advise dry fitting this first. I just did that off camera to get a feel for roughly where it's gonna sit. But about, about there looks okay. I don't think you can really go wrong with the arms if they're not perfectly where they're supposed to be, as long as it, they go into that hole very well and sort of hide the mechanism of connecting the table. Together, it's going to look pretty baller. So for the final bit, we're going to want to attach him to his base. And for that, it's just simply taking some more of this plastic glue, putting it all the way around this flat bit of, I won't call it his base, but the bit that attaches to the base. So just give it a nice spin around there. Take that and then work out where you want to sit him on this base. I'm going to put him slightly off center because he is slightly off center. And with that, we are completely finished. Guys, that was a very, very straightforward and easy and enjoyable assembly job. Just a bit of nipping, a bit of scraping and a little bit of gluing. Got a bit of glue on my hands. Mistakes were made. Do take some care with that plastic glue because as you saw in the video, it can melt the plastic in places you don't want it to if you get it on your fingers. Other than that, let me know in the comments below. You know, obviously I've had a little bit of a break from painting this with a bit of respite. So let me know what you guys do if you're feeling a little bit painting fatigued and how you re-energize yourself getting back into the spirit of things equally as i mentioned at the beginning i really dislike that reference art on the box i'm just not sure i can paint this one white i just never like how white it looks and it's incredibly difficult to paint so let me know in the comments below how you would advise painting these up i'm not quite sure what color schemes work particularly well with these nids so point me in the right directions anyway guys thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Now with my hands cleaned up, let's just have a look cleaned up, it won't come off.